uh, let's see. It's it's at seven thirty, and I I was looking at the <laughs> at the venue. Just one second. Uh, shoot. I'm sorry. One second here, and I'll tell you the the, the uh, venue is. Come on. Yeah, Duke Duke Energy Center for the Performing Arts. It starts at 7.30 on Saturday. All right, so hopefully folks that are listening will get a chance to check that out. I'm going to look at my schedule. Like I said, I work at the Haytad Center, so I've got to make sure that I see if I have anything going on on Saturday. But if I don't, I'll definitely try to make it as well. But I'll definitely be directing people to come and check you out at that performance. And glad that you were able to join the conversation and share with us a little bit of your knowledge of the blues as well as just the uh, some of your harmonica playing and just that rich history that you've shared with us and everything. And hopefully we can get you back on in the very near future. All right. Well, it's been my pleasure, and, and I appreciate you taking time to talk to me. No problem at all. Yeah, right. Now, Thank coming you. back to y'all and everything, um, I was asking uh, Rodney and the uh, other gentlemen whether y'all, what, what styles of music you are looking at or are you trying to cover across the spectrum? I mean, like if a rock band came or a, a polka band came, would you look at them as a category, or are you sticking pretty much to our music, meaning African American music? All genres, all genres, all genres of music. Uh, the, the whole key to atmosphere entertainment is to build um, the independent brand. Period. Uh, there shouldn't be an independent and a mainstream. That should just be music. Um, that's what we're all about. Um, we feel like yeah. uh, one one thing my partner uh, Demetrius uh, Angel as well has said. We all come to agreement on is your fan base and social media is now the record label. You don't need a record label. Um, it's mainly having a strong group of people around you, a team that push just as hard as you do for your craft. Um, that's what it comes down to. Uh, yeah, is it easy? No. Um, it's not hard either, you know. It's really just having people want to fight the fight with you, the ups and the downs. So uh, as far as music, that's what makes us who we are. We're all very experienced in music. So all genres are welcome. Um, as well with our award show, Demetrius will uh, touch base with you more on the award show, which uh, he is the mastermind behind the visuals and whatnot, so uh, no better person to uh, touch up on that. Demetrius, if you will, please uh, kind of give him a little more insight on the magazine and the uh, award show, if you will, please, sir. Yes, yes please. Uh, yeah. Well, uh, to answer your question about categories, and you need blues, uh, and I think I heard in your conversation earlier that um, many genres, uh, for lack of a better term, have been lost or forgotten about or made to believe that it's not relevant. And yet there are thousands and thousands of artists who still play blues, who still play at jazz clubs, who sing jazz. And we have noticed that the industry has shifted so much but they have changed the whole idea of how young people consume music by marketing them with the music that they want them to hear. This is why they have control over the radios and television and all the different medias where they can control what people listen to. Uh, there was a time when uh, station managers and DJs, for example, could pick the songs they wanted to play, but now it's all orchestrated. Uh, they are given a roster. Many of them can't decide on what to play. And before they play a song, they want to know how popular is it, who's the artist, how many records have they sold, are they on the charts. And so it's, it's the, the, the playing field is not level anymore. So as a result, getting back to the question, many genres have been lost. And R&B is probably one of the biggest that has been lost that was king back in the Motown days. So... When we started our award show, we, start, we, we started with a basic outline of genres that it will grow, but 
But before we grow this award show, we have to get a handle on what we're doing and running an award show because that is a a feat all in of itself. It's all encompassing that if you have not done this before, it is not easy to just take on and just say, I'm having an award show. It's, uh, it's more than that. And the reason why I say that is because our award show is unique other than any award show that you could ever think of because, number one, we do have categories. Uh, we have pop, rock, R&B, gospel Christian, jazz, reggae, country, and Latin, and the last is hip-hop and rap. Now, from there, we plan to grow the business and encompass genres like blues, for example, and uh, bluegrass music to take you far to the other side. And in order to do that, this is our second year, and we wanted to get a real handle on what we're doing because our our award show is very unique. Uh, It is online. And people can see it if they go to our current award show website and down on the home page at the bottom, they will get a chance to see last year's show in its entirety. And it's all published online, can be a part of it without traveling, without car fare, hotel, meals, and all the things that people do when they travel to award shows to see their name and not even hear a sample of their song and the next thing you know, the category is gone and someone else won. And they spent all this money to go there, to be a part of the red carpet that didn't live up to their expectations. So we decided to do it online. And that's what's unique about our award show. And we started with these nine categories, but we are planning on adding more categories, especially next year, once we get a handle on what we're currently doing, because we didn't want to grow too fast too soon. But blues is definitely on that list. Yeah, it's interesting that you're talking about it, even like with the jazz category and everything of that nature, because my background is I came out of radio. My parents actually had a small community radio station in the uh, 70s through like the uh, mid to late 80s. So it was like going from mid 70s to mid to late 80s. And so I've had this rich tradition of radio and jazz radio in, in particular, but also some blues and other sounds. There was actually an early rap show that was on during that time. One of the guys went on to become a program director at a station in New Orleans. But I do remember that even on those stations, like the jazz stations, a lot of them are now doing like what you're talking about. They're doing those lists of the same artists playing at the same various stations, but they're still falling into that commercial trap of doing similar music and not necessarily covering the wide spectrum of jazz that's out there or the wide spectrum of R&B that's out there, but sticking to like a very um, rigid playlist. And a lot of them have also gotten away. I think that that's why low power and community radio is so popular, have gotten away from the community aspect of radio. Because you remember back in the old days, radio DJs would be all over the place in terms of being in various venues and being out there in the public. But a lot of times they're staying stuck in that studio and not really getting out into the community. At least that's my opinion of what I'm seeing by a lot of the radio DJs, not just here in North Carolina, but also in New York and California, throughout the country. And I would even argue, in some cases, throughout the world, but definitely throughout the United States. (laughs) Well, we can attest to the fact that it's all around the world. It literally is. Because uh, when you really think about it, what's happening in the industry is one thing that we think is going to be very relevant. People have tried to stay with the tradition and try to stay with the program in hopes that they may get a record deal, let's say. But as they find out that the opportunities are far and few between, as they reach out to record labels who don't return calls, who don't take your material, and the the A&R program that once was just flourishing, where they would go to venues and scout out talent, they still have A and R's, but it's not the way it used to be. And they are even, I guess, told what to do, how to do it, where to travel, who to go scout. And there's no more freedom for people to explore hidden gems that are out here in this music industry who if you just just take away who the person is and just listen to music, you would see that there would be a lot of people who would choose a lot of independent music 
over the music that today is so uh, so far is seems to be the popular music. Um, I liken it to I was a child. We could go to a, a mall, and there would be this table set up where people would have different soft drinks, let's say, and you would sit down at the table and you wouldn't see the labels. And they were testing their new soft drink. And we were surprised that people did not pick the brand names. If they had seen the brand names, they probably would have chosen it. But one of the things we've noticed about the industry in relation to that is that when you just listen to the music and take away the artists of of who they are and just listen to what you enjoy, independent music would probably win hands over fist among many uh, music consumers, both young and old. But they are marketed to as to who is the most popular, who makes the most money, who is the most vocal. And all of the blogs that you see where they talk about the lives of celebrities from a personal standpoint, about what they do and the drama they're involved in, that's the thing that people are consumed with, which casts a shadow over the blues, over the jazz, over R&B. And they concentrate on the lives of people more than they do their music. And when you watch events, red carpet events and award shows, it's all about who is wearing the most expensive clothing or who is dressed the least. And it's never about the music if you really pay attention to it. And so one of the things that we're trying to do is bring all of that back. And our award show is dedicated to the music. And no matter who it is that has submitted music from someone who is up and coming, who just started, that entered our award show, to someone like Latoya London, who was on the third season of American Idol with Fantasia and uh, Jennifer Hudson, who entered our last year's show. No matter, if you take the whole spectrum of artists who is the least known to someone who is very popular, artists who enter into our award show, it's about the music not about their popularity and who they are. And that's definitely a very rich thing that's going on here in North Carolina because, I mean, in North Carolina, we've got a very rich independent music scene. We've got a couple of things that have gone on here, like the Moog Festival started in Nashville but is now in Durham. There's a festival, there's a jazz festival called Art of Cool that if you've got any jazz artists, definitely look into that because it was started by a gentleman that went to North Carolina Central University and a, a business partner of his, a young lady named uh, Cicely Mitchell, and they started the, what is now, I think, going on its 50 year, the Art of Cool Festival, which has had various jazz and R&B and hip-hop artists that have performed on a regular basis. So there's a very much of a rich tradition of independent musicians here. One of the things that I'm involved with is a thing called The Road to the Apollo, where we actually have an agreement with the Apollo Theater where we do like these contests uh, based along the Apollo show. We have a host, the whole nine hosts, the Sandman, the whole nine yards. But they work, the guy that created it, Captain Newborn, worked out a deal where they get to jump the line and go to the auditions and perform at the Apollo and get to be on that stage because I think the success rate is like 98%. So like uh, they've sent probably close to 50 to 60 acts, and most of those have at least gotten uh, the initial uh, show on the Apollo. Now, some of you have gone further and been on TV shows like with Tyler Perry and one different uh, recording uh, venue uh, appearances and things of that nature from that. But so, so in other words, some have gone further than others, but they have definitely all pretty much gotten on to at least the first round because of that agreement that he worked out with the people that run the Apollo Theater. Sounds exciting. Yeah. Um, now I had a question really quickly for, uh, well, actually a couple of questions for Angel, if she's still there. And one is I was wondering what it was like when you were distributed by Ichabon, because I know Ichabon, that is definitely a major blues label, and you were distributed by them um, as, a, uh, as an R&B singer. Because when I was doing, a, well, I still do some blues DJing at a, another radio station in, in Carlboro, but when I was doing the one at Central's radio station, Ichabon was definitely one of the labels that would, I would be in contact with on a regular basis. And then also, you talked really in your bio about that conflict that people have between the spiritual and the secular, but that you don't really fall into that. Like, you're um, comfortable performing in both the gospel and the popular music. I know some people, they get caught up in that whole, how can I be straddle the fence between both? But you seem comfortable in both doing popular as well as gospel music. And I was just wondering how that came about with you. 
Well, the first question, first question to your answer is um, 